Good morning. I hope you're doing well this morning. I wanted to do something a little bit different today. Um, I wanted to share with you my story, my journey, um, and what led me to this point of my life and my walk with Christ. So um, just to start off with, I, I grew up in a Christian church, but at a very young age, I had a significant drug problem. Um, I got drugged to church every time the doors were open. Full disclosure, I stole that joke from a visiting pastor, <laughs> but it's very true. Every time the doors were open, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, we were there. But I'm so grateful for that. At the age of five, I accepted Jesus into my heart. It's an experience that even though I was so very young, I remember vividly to this day. I remember being very aware of the fact that Jesus died a brutal death 2,000 years before, and that my sins were what nailed him to that cross. I remember kneeling by my mother's bed and weeping as she told me what Jesus had done for me in order to make me his own. God, in his incomprehensible mercy, grace, and love, sent his only son to take my place in paying the penalty of death for my sins. Sin requires blood. It should have been ours. It should have been mine. But God, let it be his. When I was 14, my family and I moved to a small town in southern New Jersey. We bought a house in a newly built development nestled between the antique shops, the produce stands, and the cow pastures of Mullica Hill. We were too far away from our old church to attend. So once in a while, we would visit an area church hoping to find a new one on the New Jersey side of the Delaware River. During the couple of years that followed our move, I grew more and more rebellious. I made a couple of friends in our neighborhood, one of which was Jen, I've changed her name, um, and began to allow myself to be influenced in ungodly ways. Jen was the leader of our little pack and everything I thought I wanted to be. She was very popular at school, always the life of the party, very attractive, slender, blonde, could have any guy she wanted because they were all falling all over her. She was a great dancer, she was cool, and she seemed to have it all together. In our little group, Jen was the one who was always on the cutting edge. She started smoking and we all followed her. She started drinking and again, we all followed her lead. She started smoking dope and the others followed but that's where I drew the line. But I'm sure it would only have been a matter of time considering where my heart was. The course of Jen's and my life veered abruptly apart the summer before our 10th grade year. The Lord led my family to a new church one Sunday evening and God began to change my life from that moment on. I remember clearly for the first time that I walked into that church. As I entered those doors, my heart leapt and my jaw dropped as I saw people for the first time with their hands raised toward heaven, crying out with all of their hearts, praises to the living God. My heart cried out too. It cried out within me, this is real. This is the way God was meant to be worshiped. My life changed daily after that point as my heart turned back toward my savior. Jen's life did not lead her down the same path. Although I tried to reach out to her several times with the gospel, she had no time for God. In 12th grade, Jen became pregnant and dropped out of high school. The father of the baby did not want to have any part of raising a child and took off, leaving Jen as a single mother at the age of 17. I lost contact with Jen after high school until I got a call from my mother 11 years later telling me about her death. Jen had become an alcoholic and had died at the age of 29 of cirrhosis of the liver. As I looked down at my friend in the casket on the day of her funeral, I was overwhelmed. Excuse me. By God's grace toward me, favor that I did not deserve. I look back over my life, back to when I was a child and God touched my little heart and it broke over my sins and Jesus' death for me on the cross because of them. 
Then I look to my junior high years. I look at all the times that I tried so hard to get myself into trouble and was frustrated because it seemed that there was some invisible hand stopping me. I look at the path that I had begun to walk down with Jen as my leader. I was following blindly, not aware of where that path would lead. That day at the funeral, for the first time, I fully realized that it had been leading me to spiritual and possibly physical death. I look at how the God's hand of grace snatched me off of that path and rerouted my life, placing me divinely on a path that would lead to abundant life. It could just as well have been me in that coffin that day, had God not, because of his great grace and kindness, pulled me back and drawn me near to himself. What's the difference between my life and Jen's? Only that the Lord rescued me. And why me? I don't have any idea, but I am so incredibly, incredibly grateful. The words to a powerful C.C. Winans song sum it up so beautifully for me. Oh, your mercy never failed me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I believe that there are some this morning, God is calling your name. God is calling to you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants you to know him as a father and as a friend and as your savior. If you want to have a relationship with the Lord, do you pray this prayer after me from the sincerity of your heart? Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. My sin is first and foremost against you. Please forgive me, Lord. I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross in my place, taking all of my sins, past, present, and future, upon himself and paying the full penalty for them. Please help me to turn by the power of your Holy Spirit from everything that offends you. I place my life and my will into your hands and I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior all the days of my life. If you prayed that prayer along with me this morning, I want to know about it. We want to rejoice with you. We also want to get some free resources into your hands that will help aid you on this new glorious journey. So please do call 1-800-NEED-HIM. 1-800-N-E-E-D-H-I-M. God bless you and have a wonderful day.